I'm just, if I get very emotional, I apologise for that. I've got a, 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 a cousin, a Pentecostal cousin, who does not approve of the divine feminine, so he is very ill with cancer at the moment and going to be passing, we believe, taking off life support in the next day or two. So just, yeah. Do you want to have a little prayer for him? Yes, that would yeah, that would be lovely if that's okay. Um, do you want to start with that one? Let's end uh, I'll do it at the end if that's all right. Okay, but it's bothering you. That's um, it's just that if I get very emotional, but um, I what I'll do is I'll talk about my journey and why I want to make the, the film of Mary Magdalene and my journey. I haven't made it yet, but I'm just about to do another promo video for funding, which will do in the next two, three days. Uh, I have some funding and um, I need quite a bit more, um, and why it's taken so long, because it's such a vast subject with such an amazing human being um, that walked with Christ, it's such a huge subject, how do you put that into a short film in 15, 20 minutes? Um, that has not been easy, so we'll talk about it. Okay, well, because um, you started in your life with New Zealand, didn't you? So, Take us back to the beginning. I'm, Eng I'm English, and we emigrated to New Zealand in the 70s, my parents always wanted to go to New Zealand. So we, I lived in New Zealand for many, many years. And um, so we left when I was 14, and then we were there for about 10 years. And then I came back to England in the 80s. And it was there that I was introduced to all these spiritual, um, Shirley MacLaine books, and books on Druidry, Celtics, everything. That's when it all happened in the 80s. And I just met all these really fascinating people. Um, and the goddess and the divine feminine, that was all in that period in the UK in the 80s. And then I went back to New Zealand and started studying Reiki. Well, I teach cultural Reiki, that's probably what I teach. And well, I'll be doing tours here as well, because I believe the Celts are in reality. Um, but the goddess started 25, 30 years ago just honouring the divine feminine. And um, that was reading books of. Um, Sharon McLean and also um, Jesus the Man by Barbara Thiering. And that's who was introduced to me by a friend of mine, uh, who's now passed, um, many, many years ago. Has anybody heard of, of Barbara Thiering? Because oh, yeah, she, she was one of the first, or one of the first, not the first, one of the first authors of the, um, talking about Mary Magdalene and Jesus. And she was one of the few, I think the only woman, if I'm right, that worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and um, translating them. Yeah, but she was there for 15 years. Yeah, she was there for a long, long time. Trying to find out the truth about yes. her. And so there's a lot of, uh, of course she has her own opinion, but there's yes. a lot of truth in what she said. Well, she's passed, I think, and she passed away a few years ago. Oh, really? But she wrote three books, and one of them was Jesus the Man that I was introduced to, and that um, her way of understanding the Bible was the passion method which is what, what lies underneath mm. what, what is actually said. It's coded form of coding. Yes. yes. Not necessarily secret coding, but it is a definitely a different way of reading the Bible. And I was fascinated by this. I'd never heard of this before. And then I started to read other books, um, you know, Hegel's, who's a lecturer at Princeton University, many, many. And um, what always came back was, um, was that Mary Magdalene was um, Apostle of the Apostles and she actually understood the teachings, really understood the teachings. And then I started to read um, the Pistis Sophia, which is very hard to read, it's the Gnostic, Gnostic Bible. And Thomas mentioned J.J. Hurtak, who has written a translation or an interpretation. He's done a commentary. He, he commentary. Yeah. I know them. Amazing. You know her, yes. yeah. And have you seen his, uh, one of his lectures? Yeah. And that he believes that is a love letter. What does he say? Um, that the Pistis Sophia is a love letter from Jesus to Mary Magdalene, to Mary Magdalene or to mankind. It's beautiful. Well, it's both. I mean, incredible to actually say that. Um, but it's very, it's very hard to understand the Pistis Sophia. But even, uh, sorry, I go back a bit. I followed a Gnostic. I started at went to Auckland University and started theology. Um, did a few papers in theology 10 or 11 years ago, and I, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I only ended up doing about three papers. And then I found a lecturer of Gnostic Studies, um, Trent Pugh, who and his wife 
Bernie, who came to New Zealand from Australia to do to, to, to teach gnosis. So I left university and started following them and did, I attended lectures two or three days a week and, and, and um, retreats and everything. And it was fascinating. And um, I filmed them over a period of two hours, which I'm still working on the editing of um, what I filmed, the videos. And I've got a BBC editor who's working on them now. Um, and we did one on the, the Divine Feminine, which I've actually already put on to Facebook. But it was, it was fascinating. And they gave me as a thank you for doing the videos for this to see it. And then I did a little bit of study. It's very hard. It's quite hard going, the, the, the Gnostic um, texts. But even so, what I've, what I've come to understand is that Mary Magdalene was respected and was, um, was, was seen, to be, um, seen to understand the teachings, the Gnostic teachings, the most. And there was, there was more understanding than it was from a divine family point of view. I don't know. But, um, so, so I did that, and then I, so I started um, filming my teachers, my Gnostic teachers in New Zealand many years ago. But it's taken me several years to actually write a script um, about Mary Magdalene because it's such a vast subject. And to do a feature film, I don't know whether anybody's seen the Mary Magdalene feature film with Rumi Mara, Mark Green Phoenix last year. Mm. A feature film. Feature yes, mm -hmm. beautiful. Uh, she's wandering around Galilee and sort of white, yes, yes. white stuff. It was, very, it, was it was a beautiful film, um, mixed reviews, but I, I loved the film. Yeah. So I didn't want to do something traditional like that because it had already been done. What is the title? It's called Mary, Mary Magdalene, okay. and, and the actress is Rooney Mara. And um, so what I've done is, after this is my fourth script I'm working on now. Because I did, I did initially um, the Easter story, but I did it from from Mary Magdalene's point of view, and to, to get enough actors to do that with all the disciples, I needed about 20 actors, including the disciples and, and obviously the Romans and, and, and everyone that was involved, looking at you know, 16 to 20 people, and then I was looking at a lot of funding for that, so I gave up on that. So now I'm focused on a young woman. It's a modern day story of a young woman called Sarah. And there are controversial stories that Sarah is the daughter of Jesus mm -hmm. and Mary I'm not necessarily saying that it is or not, but it's a young woman who comes to France on holiday and finds a spiritual group of women that are teaching the divine feminine. And uh, she has a lot of, um, she meets a teacher who they've been told is a special teacher. And then she has a lot of dreams, where she has um, dreams and of the past, where she's with all of these women in the past. And so what she's experiencing in the day-to-day -day life in the retreat um, is exactly the same people that she's, that she's dreaming of in the past. The past uh, life. Yes. Mm. So it's, that's where I'm at. And, and, but, the challenge of that is still trying to do that within 20 minutes with enough funding with actors. And I have actors, I have director of photography and I have an editor. But it's still trying to sort of get enough funding to pay professionals, people that, that I respect, that, that, that want to work on it, that want to be paid accordingly, of course. And trying to, um, you know, I'm limited with time. So that's been my challenge. And I'm getting there slowly. So what's the timeline? Would you I'd like to like shoot at the end of September, beginning of October, and I know I'm pushing that, but I've got everyone, I have actors in place, I have a, um, an editor, a director of photography and a sound person, and I have a producer that's worked um, as a music composer in Hollywood that's, that's been helping me a little, and I also have another lady that I've just connected with on Facebook who is a producer of a um, Hollywood Christian film who said, look, I can start, I'm not so busy at the moment, I can start working with you and giving you some backup, you know, some support. But again, it's a short film, so I can shoot in five days. I have everyone in place. There's still one or two actors I need. But the director of photography work, has worked on a fantasy film recently, so I have a beautiful Jesus that I'm going to be meeting in the next week or two. So all of these things have just come into place. 
Um, I just need just a few more thousand to be able to pay everyone. I don't pay myself as a director, but everyone else needs to be paid. And then shoot um, in this area. And one of the scenes, one of the ritual scenes involving Jesus would be, for me, in one of the Catholic castles. So that's why I asked, that was one of the reasons why I asked, because a lot of people are quite adamant to know that Catholic has got nothing to do with Mary Magdalene, mm. it's pure yeah, yes. Christian. Well, and, well, and I thought, well, that's so this, this mixed reviews with, with um, the Da Vinci Code, and, and you know, there's, there's, there's the controversy on both sides, but intuitively, um, because in the film, the teacher is Mary Magdalene, and Sarah finds this out at the end, that it is actually Mary Magdalene from um, statues and paintings and listening to a tour guide talk. At the end, she says, oh, that's the teacher. So it's like she's, she's channeling. But she doesn't meet her in this life. She's she does meet her in this life, but she meets her through someone else, but, 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 but she's channeling Mary Magdalene. Right. So you don't need a Mary Magdalene. I've got three I'm talking to at the moment. Oh, you do want to? But, but, but if, yeah. yes. Okay. yes. So she will have a part. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But if the challenge has been how do you put all of that in? But, <laughs> 20 minutes. Can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Um, why, why limit it to 20 minutes? This script sounds amazing. Why can't it be at least an hour? Money. Nicola made a film about Druids. It's an hour long. Um, money. Hmm. Yeah, You're looking at. To shoot um, something that's around 15, 20 minutes, you're looking at around about um, five day shoot. Mm -hmm. And um, the funding is usually, I'm, I'm basing it on funding of around 15,000. 15, how much have you got so far? About five. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hi! Hi. <laughs> Okay, so yes. But I'd love to do more, and, and, and intuitively I felt when I was speaking to my director of photography, and, and he and he's just sort of looking at me because he he's professional. He's just worked on a fantasy film, him, um, and he is a professional. Working with a sound person, you're looking at five hundred a day. Then you're looking at paying the producer. Then you've got the editor, and then you've got the yes. editors. So fifteen will not last. I could do so, had some, you know, I'm kind of connected to Steven Spielberg, but um, I always used investors there. Now, with this production that I published this year, I find it myself. There is a whole hour long of information, because what you see in the stores, like you saying, it's all 20 minutes, a DVD of 30 minutes, or, yeah. and mine is a chunk full of information, and then a whole hour full of uh, things, and yeah. beautiful music in it. But I used to uh, have investors uh, in America um, um, connected with promotion companies. I had I, I wanted to stay in control of my own publishing. That's company. what I'm doing. But because you have spoken to producers who said that you could give a part, yeah. and then you can pay the investors you, back. You do want to talk to them. We will. Yeah, we will. Have you met before? Yes, we have briefly. Yeah. yeah very briefly. Yes. Yeah, very briefly. <laughs> But there's a producer I'm talking to in Hollywood who said, look, if you do need more, we can, we can talk. Um, it's, what tends to happen, because I'm a member of Women in Film and Television in England, is that um, the producers I have spoken to have said, well, look, let my production company manage it, and then I might let you direct or I might not. So oh. it's easier to have something that's smaller, that, 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 that I can be in control of, then they can pass it over and then they change it all and it's not really the divine feminine, it's something else. <laughs> so is it, just like brainstorming on this, um, is it, um, it's not a documentary, it's a fiction. It's not fiction. a documentary, it's a fiction, it's a drama. It's a, drama, it's a, short, yeah. fiction. It's a short fiction yeah. about a young woman who mm. finds the divine feminine through a group of women. Yes. Now these women have a um, teachings mm. that, have, that have come from the first century, so these are special teachings I'm not saying it's Mr. Sophia, but they are teachings, original teachings, esoteric teachings about the divine feminine yes. um, to bring balance. And if you make the 20 minute film, then it might be yes. leading to a longer one. Exactly. Because you know, it's, it's yes. such a nice idea, I think it should be like at least a film. Well, I think so. very nice. So that is, an, an, that is, that, that is definitely an option that we, we say can we expand? 
and then we've got the actors in place and everything's in place and then we just expand from the story. And we've got everybody in place then. You just have to think of how much money the movie can accumulate and how you are going to do that yeah. if you have an investment. I'm lucky I've got a distribution person in London that's very helpful. I used to pay my investors back just within yeah. two months because I published my productions in Christmas season in America. It's huge. I mean, I would sell thousands of these in, in Christmas season, and I, in January I could pay the investor yeah. back. Like DVDs? <laughs> you were making DVDs? Uh, yeah, CDs and uh, lectures on CD and, and audio booklets and things like that. I'm yeah. also talking to a lot of authors of Mary Michael books, uh, a few that I've been talking to and lecturers that have said, um, you know, give me some more information and so forth, and they're open to talking to me a little bit of funding. I'm doing crowdfunding, which will go online and Facebook by the end of the week as well. Can I ask a basic question? Yeah. Like, what's your filmography to date? What have you done so far? I, that's no, that's a good question. question. I, 14 years ago, went to film school and I made a short film, um, which was quite an unusual short film about um, somebody that wanted to try and change their past. Um, and a dream. So it was a dream sequence of a woman that was in a quite a, a negative um, relationship. By in the dream, she was trying to change. If that makes any sense, she was trying to change the past mm -hmm. by meditation and doing spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And that won an award for best at the film school, best actress, and it was nominated for best film. And then I made um, a few documentaries. I worked with two very successful directors in New Zealand and did a lot of sales and marketing and then I would um, I worked on Honda and New Zealand and a few corporate videos where I brought the business in and then I was a production assistant and helped write with, with the directors. Um, and that was a very interesting experience because both of them were quite different. One of the directors really didn't want me on the set at all <laughs> and the other was very open because because I brought the business in and I'd met the clients, they were comfortable talking to me, and so there was any issues, they were just relaxed talking to me rather than the director, and it was, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I made um, lots of documentaries, not documentaries, but films, I shot my Gnostic teacher, uh, teachers um, on Gnosis, and I've probably got about two hours of footage, and I'm now working on the fourth video edit, which I'm getting done in London now, and I've written a few short films, but so it's predominantly short films, documentaries, gnosis, and corporate. That's my background. Well, that's pretty impressive. Well, I don't know if that impressive, but, well, no, but, I mean, it's, but for can, making a short film, I've got some experience. Yeah, yes. yeah, can, a feature it's film. It's not like coming out as a version. Yeah. So the feature film would I would I would probably get an executive producer on board that's that's worked in the industry mm -hmm. if I was doing a feature. But for the short, I think I've got enough experience. Because another way of doing it is to work with a film school that's training filmmakers, because they will volunteer. I've got a very dear friend that worked on a short film that I made in London about a couple that were trying to connect, but it was what they were saying, not what, what they were thinking, not what they were saying. And it was a, a man's point of view and a woman's point of view, and that was interesting. And there was a few people involved in that that are now connecting me to other people through schools in London, which has been fantastic. And they've been really, and they'll come out and help me as well. Well, I, I mean, the Mary Magdalene Studies Association is at your service. We, we oh, have, thank you. you know, there's a network of people. I'm trying to work on the newsletter for us. And your question about is it factual that the capitalists thought they were a couple of There's so much so controversy, the different schools of thought, well, well, I'll that. get back to you. Yeah, no, thank you. So I appreciate that. If people have evidence about that. But that's yeah. why they were so pleased to be structured. Is because the Catholic Church knew that they held the truth about Mary Magdalene yeah. and Jesus. And mm -hmm. they were for their own gain and their members and the, the, the power that they looked in for looked for in the church. They were horrified that this all came out and that they lose their face and had to pick up and mm -hmm. pack up and, and their bags and, and leave. And that's what that's why they were so hugely murdered out by the cat, you know. But, but that raises some philosophical questions. Why would anyone be against love and marriage? And if it's true that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were lovers, so what? I mean, it's a beautiful story. It's it, it is a beautiful a great story, 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 and Jesus could not have thought, yeah. thought in, 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 the, in, the, in the place where 
places where in Israel where he was teaching. Hmm? Yeah, that was uh, the point of that. Yes, yeah, if he was actually from there. And, and Jesus was also coming from a real royal family. He had a royal line. Well, of course. The Mary Magna came from two. Yes. And uh, the only controversy in the story is for the Jews is that Mary Magdalene was not Jewish. Yeah, she was an Israeli princess or duchess, actually. Not from the tribe of Judah. She was from another lineage within the Israeli tribe. Yes, in the Israeli tribe. But that's a good thing. But, yeah. For modern Israel, they're supposed to be modern not just Israel, Judah, yes. <laughs> but the whole of the tribes. You know. Yeah, it's very Bring interesting it story. It, it's what... What wild to make it in France is that, that I believe she was here. And I've travelled to um, St. Baume in, in Provence, and I've been to, is the, I'm trying to think of the church there, um, St. Maxine, isn't it? Yeah. St. Maxine, to the Baume. And I didn't get a feeling from the church there. It was interesting, the bones are apparently there. Um, and I went up and did the pilgrimage up to, to the mountain of, of Bone and I went in the, the grotto and, mm. and that was interesting. St. Maxwell's Bone. St. Maxwell's Bone. Yes. Bar. And I thought that was interesting, but I get more of a stronger energy here. It and it's not necessarily Ren the Chateau. If mm. anywhere, it's Ren the Barn that I think, ah, oh, this feels. Mm. There's a feeling about Ren the Barn and the two, the two rivers um, meet. Mm. There's something there, and they found Celtic coins. In Melbourne, and this yeah. very special area. Yeah, and you go up to the Council of Love. Yes. Have you talked about Wayne Yard? Because she's very close. I have, to yes, I have. I've had she was invited right to today, but she couldn't come here because of this. Yeah, yeah, but yes. you know, she's in touch with us. Yes, she is. I've, I've got her. But I'm always her asking her for the evidence. Well, of yeah. course, the trouble is with different people who have yes. specific theories is they know it all, they, and they've got to the point where they don't even want to discuss the evidence because it's just so obvious that. Their theory is the correct one. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, that's slightly problematic for me as a scholar coming out in. I want the evidence. You know. Yeah, I'm a truth seeker, you know, and I believe that people deserve the truth. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Correct. And it comes yeah. with a lot of controversy at times. But I think truth is beauty. Well, truth is beauty. Maybe smile, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but we've also got to show the traces of how people yes. get the truth. Yes, yes. There's no point just wafting in and saying, no, this no. is the truth, you know. And then everybody's like, well, so this is, that's what they do in the production. This is a, called the rational production. I'm an Avamadu. Very uh, <laughs> slowly, I, I introduced the people, try to see, so that it, that they understand, and you know, and they can build a fundament on that. And then, when they're doing their own journey and their own exp explorations about mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, at least they know what is out there in this world that is to be found about Mary Magdalene that is solid. Instead but the modern day thought of Mary Magdalene is really the Da Vinci Code and the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, isn't it? Well, that's Prior what to that, to what, was, yeah, yeah. What, was, what was talked about then, prior to the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, that was one of the original books, wasn't it? Well, it was, it was one that kick started it all. Mm. Yeah. Um, but what, what's interesting, I, mean, I don't know if you've met Patrice Chaplin, who I mentioned, I think before you came in. Um, I will talk about what I call left-wing esotericism in my second talk, but she um, she reckons she's discovered the origins of the Rome the Chateau story um, in the Calvinistic schools of Rome. Um, that, that, that was in a sense of front. Um, so that's a woman you should interview yes, uh, and definitely. talk to, and I'll put you in touch with her. Um, she's written some extraordinary books. I'll be happy to do behind the scenes. I'm going to do a huge website, so anyone that's donated, Authors, anybody, all of that information will be on a, a professional website as well, so that people have access to them. Oh, that's interesting. I'll, you know, and do you mean? have like how many executive assistants have you got? <laughs> I know this is what the problem is. And this is, and, I, and I, I've said this. I, um, my first lot of funding will be to get an assistant that can help because I've done all of this. I've had to get all the crew, everything, and it's um, yes, very good. Point. And you're perhaps a producer. I'll be directing. Director, yeah. but not a businesswoman. Um, my well, background if you is. You're a businesswoman. You know how to make money. I, I know how to make, make, make money. I've done sales. Things. I've done sales and marketing since oh, since okay. 1981. So, yeah, so I can I can, I can, the, I can do the hustling. The expenses the, yeah. of the movie. Yes. Yeah. Well, we all cheer you on. Um, any other questions for Madam before we break? Um, we have sure very interesting. Thank you. Really it's, just, it's a long story, but we'll we'll get there. Um, thank you so much.
I mean, I've got one last controversial question, but your, your narrative hangs on the incarnation theory. Um, like, sort of, have you worked well, on past life regression stuff yourself? Or not? I uh, have. I know this is a very good question. This is yeah. a very good question because, and I've discussed this with my friend Susie, who's a genealogist as well. Yeah, yeah, she's doing stuff. Do the memories that we have, if I have memories um, of just say that I've been told I look like my grandmother, a smile, and the same laugh, and so forth. The memories that I have in the 1920s, is that a past life, or are they my grandmother's memories? If I look like her, if you look at the structure of the DNA and everything, um, what are those memories? I find it fascinating. Apparently the Cathars believed in reincarnation, mm. but that's something I'm still working on with the script, because I do want to be... I want to be a little bit careful. What I, what I do believe is um, we have memories of the Divine Feminine and the Goddess. If there were women priests, then my or, or, and your ancestors would have, would have heard them. So that's in, is that in our DNA, that at some, at some point in our past, there'll be an awareness of women, in, women priests, women in the church? It's in our unconscious. Is it somewhere in the... Do you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's yeah, fascinating subject. To, to articulate and Very specify. fascinating. Um, and there was a film made about um, reincarnation of the Cathars, wasn't there? It was a documentary. Yes, yes, yes. I think there's more than one, actually. Yeah. It's and fascinating. And even Time, Time Team did one, didn't they, I think? Do you remember? Um, um, Tony, Tony? Yes, Tony. I, know, I know Tony as in yeah. um, Black Adder. Yeah, he's yes. just come out against Brexit. I love him. He's... Uh, He's quite controversial. He did the uh, Last Supper and said that there was no way that was a female. He's, well, he's done a lot of documentaries, it's very interesting. So it is, it's, um, I think there's a lot, I think the divine feminine is because it's been suppressed, but I think it's there in our unconscious from the past. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's coming, I think we're becoming more aware of it again. It's not something new, I think it's, we've got archaeological evidence that there was. What I was saying about yeah. priest, yeah. But what about soul memory? Because you're well, talking about the physiology, yes, and certainly they prove that um, the brain does carry ideation from past yes. relatives, and in fact, interests are transmitted through genetics. But the soul memory, from what I was hearing you say, is that this woman comes to this area, and she's exposed to some teaching, and she, in her spirit and soul, is remembering. In the dreams, yes. Um, that this group of people, as souls, were together yes. in the past. Yes. And we're creating something together. So maybe it's the creative energy that gets memorized in the soul. And so she's coming into creative memory. And the other people in the group are also coming into that. And then they're going together on that creative memory to a time in the past where they learned something that they hold in that creative memory. You follow me? Yes. I can do something with a little meditation here when we come back oh, wow. and show you She's how that works. Lunch. I can show you how that works. So look, should we, should we finish a break lunch, but can we do your meditation? Your prayer. Your prayer that you wanted to do. Well, you want to do a little prayer for, for your, your For your disbelieving um, dear Yes, I'm just wondering how to do Let's that. Well, I, I don't want this, yes, I don't want that because yeah. of